we shall together discuss this evening is fear. Fear, I have been just discussing with the Reverend also just before I came in here and I have agreed to be here every Friday 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. to give a little help to those who have these problems. So I'll be here every Friday or at least I hope to be here every Friday 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and if anybody asks you for some help please show them the way to the temple I'll be here they can see Reverend Saranankara give the name to Reverend and he will make a list of the people and I am willing to come and see them on an individual basis as the Reverend just pointed out one of the common things that people come about today is fear they always come and say I'm frightened I'm frightened so in another word frightened and fear come from the same source fear is one of the main things in the society and that is why I have agreed to examine this topic what we are going to do today is to examine the topic two things first we examine the topic fear then let us see to what extent we can help ourselves to what extent can we help ourselves to rid ourselves of this fear which is plaguing the human mind all of us have fear in our minds we must first of all accept this and I will tell it to you, uh, read to you some of the fears that are commonly found in almost all of us. The only problem is we have come to accept the fears as part and parcel of life. We think it is normal to have these fears in us. Yes, if it is in position where it is manageable it is all right but when it gets out then it destroys our personality destroys our personality some of the western psychologists and one of the books which I if you have Eric Fromm fear by Eric Fromm is a, is a well-known author on fear you can read it right he talks about many things fear of freedom fear of adventure fear of being alone fear of being isolated fear of loneliness fear of failure fear of uh, being dismissed from a job fear that one will not get the necessary promotion in our life fear that we may not be able to reach our destination fear our children will not do well in society fear that our neighbor may do harm to us fear that I may not live up to my wife's expectations fear that I may not do well at home fear somebody else will take my wife away or my husband away see it's a meaningless fears which torment our mind fear somebody else will not say that our clothes are matching or we are not living a good having a good standard and you can go on like that that is called analytical thinking so and when you list them down on a piece of paper then you find this mind has got lots of problems and the fear according to these teachings and the psychologists 
is one of the things which robs us of good relationships. Why is there no peace of mind between a husband and a wife, between mother and a child, between boss and subordinates, between neighbors? Everything comes from that one word called fear. We just accept it. We don't see the cause. In Buddhism, we see the cause and the effect. We see the effect, but we don't see the cause. We accept it. But in Buddhism, no, you see the cause. The cause is fear. Why doesn't the neighbor associate with us? Because he's afraid. He's afraid. He might know his, uh, his uh, private things, his personal things, and so on. So you see, this is a very deep subject. So he shuns us by putting a wall, a gate, keeping an Alsatian door, cold face, no friendliness, and so on. So we develop all these defenses without trying to examine the cause. In Buddhist teaching, we must examine the cause if we are going to remove them from us. You may have seen many people on the roadside they have got very big sores in their legs and their feet, the poor people, they live with it. In fact, even as we look at that sores, we are a bit scared. How can he not feel anything? He has learned to live with his fears. He has learned to live with his fears. Similarly, we have also learned to live with many fears and we say, oh no, I don't have any fear at all. No, no, not at all. We've just accepted them. Some people are terrified of a textbook. Oh, they can do all, any hard work outside, but you give them a textbook, a table, pen, pen and a paper. Oh no, please. They dread. Some people dread having to draft something. So you, you must examine. Having examined all these fears, we try and see, has that fear a right to remain in our head? Must we allow that fear to, to cripple our thinking? What happens is the fear cripples our thinking, prevents us from blooming, bringing out the best in us. That is where the problem starts. It prevents us from bringing out the best in us. And we say, oh no, this is all I am. No, it's not true. We are crippled. Fear makes us very negative. Negative towards one another. To our work, to our employer, to our employee. And you can go on like that. It becomes very negative. And then from that, what do happens to us? We become anxious. We are tensed up. We, we become cold towards each other. We are suspicious. We dare not express our feelings. Sometimes even when we want to hum a simple song, you are afraid that man may think, I don't have a very good voice. And then he will... I will drop his in his image. Why should you do that? Why should you torture yourself like that? What is wrong? So you see, I can go on endlessly in this list. You have to know it. Because this is where we call, we have to do contemplation. That is why some people, after some years of practice of meditation, they say, what's happening to me? I am doing so many practices, but I am still the same. My feelings are still the same. Why? Because we don't contemplate. We don't contemplate enough on all these factors. And if we don't contemplate year in, year out, we may be doing some sort of practice, 
but we will only remain in the same level because over a period of time this becomes robot practice it is not good we must learn in buddhism as you'll know examine the things inside how is it the buddha within a matter of short time he was able to excel everybody of course we can say his past his present was also important he was able to do the right practices the buddha had this had some fears too he didn't leave the a palace immediately i'm sure he must have had some fears what will the royalty say if i leave the palace today what will my royal family say if i leave my wife behind my son behind what will they think of me will they think i'm a coward an irresponsible person i'm sure his mind was played with fears but he was able to contemplate use his wisdom overcome that and he took to his path of renunciation he too was born as a man isn't it so he had to overcome them and he did it no problem Whereas if you ask ourselves, oh no, I cannot do this. Oh no, I cannot do that. Hundreds of things we say, no, I cannot. No, I cannot. We are being negative immediately. Immediately, even before we even try it. We say, no, I cannot. Over a period, it becomes part and parcel of us. We don't look at the example set by the Buddha. he never said it is impossible for a prince to go and live under a tree barefooted with a begging bowl unthinkable we are only ordinary office workers if we think it is so difficult to renounce what do you think it must have been for a prince in those days who had everything at his feet everything that he could command that he could wish for was there but because he had the strength of mind to face his fears and to see to what extent it was real to what extent it was not real there are times fear is useful like when we are crossing a road fear is important we see to the right we see to the left and then we take a decision now it is right and proper to cross the road their fear is useful fear is useful that is what nature has put it into us it helps us and keeps us and protects us from many fear many accidents and things like that it is useful there but when we allow it to overtake to grow into a huge thing when we lose control of ourselves then is a problem a very common problem is spirits isn't it everybody is so terrified of a dark place sleep in a house alone they're terrified go to a temple at night alone terrified stay near the shrine alone terrified can you see the fear of spirits cemeteries dead bodies oh no they will not even touch it only the night before last it was the wife today is a dead body i don't want to touch it see how fear overcomes us or rather overtakes us that's what i mean we have to examine them we say oh it is our tradition we are not being honest with ourselves we are not being honest we just say it's tradition it's a custom of life this is this we are very good for providing excuses that is no good how to become out or other how to make progress on the path if we are going to stick and cling to fears no we must rationalize them yes if i'm a buddhist 
Why should I fear to see the Buddha at night or be in his presence alone? Why must I have ten people around me? If I say that I have been practicing the Buddhist faith, why should I fear? You mean to say the Lord Buddha will let me down? So you've got to go on examining. It's a very slow process. The problem with the mind is there is it is not there's no tablet for it. This is the problem. Today's world everything is made simple by the great scientists. You just have to look, the watch runs on time. You just put a button on, it functions. You put a button, the light is on. You just turn the ignition key, the car, mighty car starts. So you see, but that they can. But it comes to the mind, till today science has not produced that. The mighty aeroplane can be started with a small ignition. but not the mind. When a fear has gripped the mind, there is no tablet. It can grow from one psychiatric ward to another psychiatric ward. It's not a simple process because, as I told you, this is my line. Every other day, my job is looking into people's mind filled with negative problems. So this is my line. Everywhere fear. They can very well say, all right, I don't want to be afraid. No. Take the case of a man who is addicted to liquor. He's afraid to give it up in one sense. He's afraid. How can I ever live without a bottle? He shivers. And we go through the same process for many things. He has got to, over a period of time, I will tell you, to give auto-suggestion to himself. That is the cure. One of the best cures is that. And I hear in the city, a few people are running courses where they charge you a lot of money, but they teach you this one. The same thing. So many of these fears we must examine and find out why is it there? Who put it there? Is it necessary for it to be there? And then slowly as we reason, first time you'll be terrified. I have gone through myself. It's very frightening. Some people's fear of examinations is terrible cannot be controlled. Some people all the time telling, oh, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not handsome enough. You are every day condemning yourself. How to become positive? You're every day saying, I'm not beautiful, I'm not beautiful. Every time look at the fear, over a period of time, you're scared to look at the mirror yourself. What does it matter? You should be thankful. Examine it in the positive way. I'm thankful I have a pair of eyes. I'm thankful I've got a pair of ears. Now this is a positive. I'm honest with you. I'm thankful I've got a mind. I may not be the most brilliant mind in the world, but I have a mind. I've got a nose which functions well. So you got to look at all the positive things in us, as it, people call it, count the blessings. Then, it doesn't matter if I'm not the most beautiful person in the world. It doesn't matter. The world is not full of beautiful persons only. It doesn't mean the world is only for beautiful persons. So you've got to go over psychoing yourself if you are going to overcome this. Because no amount of money you spend in the clinics is going to help you. No amount of money, no amount of money that you spend in the cosmetic center is going to help you. Or spending in this, what do you call this, uh, complexes, buying expensive clothes, decorating the home and so on. Basically, it's fear. Fear that my neighbor will not look up to me. Can't you see that? My neighbor may not look up to me. Our craving for respect is so great. 
Learn to live a simple life. And that's what we are doing during our eight precepts day. Is actually practicing this. This is what you're practicing this. You're not afraid now. Today you're not with cos without you're not you are not wearing cosmetics today. You're not wearing the best coat today. But aren't you happy yourself today? You are happy too. You're not having a swivel chair today. There's no carpet here. But you're still happy. This is exactly what you are practicing today. Many people don't realize what they are practicing. We are practicing to see, can I be at home? Can I be at peace with myself? Ah, this is what you are practicing. And examine yourself, aren't you happy? Yes. So, a lot of things that we do each day is also is also unnecessary. Unnecessary. We must learn to develop that self-confidence. Everywhere people say, people today in Malaysia in particular say, oh, must have confidence, must have confidence. That person has no confidence. We must give our staff confidence. This is a common slogan today. Confidence, you see, is the word everybody uses it. Comes a question. Where which supermarket sells confidence tablets? No supermarket sells confidence tablets at all. If there is, then there won't be so much of problem. There is no tablet for this. Although in certain fields I have found, they have developed certain kinds of things. But that is going against nature. So, so develop confidence. When there is fear underneath, if you don't remove the fear, it's okay, today take alcohol to overcome the fear. Don't you think he's introducing a, an intoxicant into the bloodstream? So this is what they call buying confidence. One pack, one bottle, and so on. Finally, the guy becomes an alcoholic. Destroys his family, destroys his mind, destroys his nerves, destroys his bank balance, his property. Everything goes off. He becomes a repulsive person in society. What is he trying to do? He was trying to gain confidence, which means trying to overcome fear. They're all interrelated. Everything is in the mind. Of course, there are people who take up the drugs faster, shortest cut. They take, oh, this take, if you take this, you'll become, you'll be able to fly through this air. You can become very bold. You can overcome your problems. So people tell them, all right, here you are, my friend. Take this one. You'll be okay. No. And here's a person who says, I can't sleep. Another person says, here is a tablet. If you take this, you can sleep. So he becomes a victim over the years. Instead of examining what is the root cause of all these things, I am not saying every cause can be removed, but many definitely can be removed. Many definitely can be removed. We have to be very practical. Certainly we can control our nerves without having to resort to liquor. Have you seen smokers? Every time they smoke, it's actually weakness. It's also a kind of weakness. All they have to do is sit and come to terms with themselves. That's all. Very simple. Very simple thing. I'm talking of those who smoke very heavy, 40, 50 sticks a day. There's no necessity. And then when they meet me, they say, Oh, can you tell me how I can stop it? Can you tell me a way I can stop this one? Costing me so much in terms of money and health. Also fear. It all started with fear. Fear of the examination. Fear I'm going to meet my boss. Let me have a quick puff. It all started as trying to overcome fear. Finally, it becomes a habit. And it's too late. 
not so easy to give up. As you know, habits are not easy to give up. Then comes a question. How, are, how do we intend to overcome fears? Is there a shortcut? These are some of the fears that I brought it out. Is there a shortcut? People say meditate. But I think before we meditate, I like to follow another course. Think it over. Contemplate on it. Read some good books. Discuss with a person with, in whom you have some trust who will not betray us. This is what most people don't want to discuss. Why? If I tell him my personal or private problems, the very next moment he'll go and tell a hundred people, I better not. So we have no faith in society. We have no faith in a friend. It's good to have someone who's knowledgeable, who, has, who, who, who will not despise you, who will not ridicule you, who will not laugh at you, but give you a patient listening, an understanding heart, who will have compassion. That's what the Buddha is. The Buddha knew that Angulimala was a bad character. All the same, he forgave him, accepted him, and showed him the new path. So similarly, we practicing Buddhists, when we hear a friend having a problem, we should not laugh at the problem. We should not ridicule the problem. We may have done it yesterday, but let us overcome it today. We try and practice understanding. You know one of the precepts? The right understanding. We understand the person. We try and accept the person. All right, you've made a mistake. You've taken liquor too much. Okay, I understand you. Now, all I'm interested in explaining to you that this is bad for you. You must now stay away from it. This is the way you overcome your problem. And we accept him and we show him the new path then we are practicing Buddhists. We are practicing right understanding. We are practicing compassion like the Buddha did to Angulimala. You see? So do not run away from fear. Now there's one method by which <clears throat> fear can be overcome to a large extent. I have personally read the life histories of a few people who used this technique and obtained great success. And I am willing to share it with you. Moral training overcomes a lot of fear. We can always see a person who is more given to a moral way of life, you can see that particular person is less scared. He's less scared of many things. So if we want to lead a very, I mean, an internal fearless life, moral, morality is the basis. First requis prerequisite, Morality, that is why you start by having the five precepts and then the eight precepts and all the precepts along with it. Morality is the basis. Number two, a one which, over, which uh, takes you faster along this path is chanting. A great soul was once asked this question. How is it you are such a fearless person? He just passed away 30 years ago. How, uh, maybe about 40 years ago. How is it that 
you are such a fearless person. And he said, my basis is my morality. I have come to terms with myself. I found great courage in chanting. The chanting removed all his fears, he said. Regular chanting. He became a fearless person. He said when he was a young child, he used to ask his nurse, how do I overcome my fear? And the nurse became his tutor. She just happened to tell him something. He kept on practicing till he became a great national figure. So I too have done the same thing, though I am not as great as him or nowhere near him. But I have found that it works. It works. It does great work. It's worth trying. So the next is after morality is chanting. The next one, we have to contemplate. Find out which one you want to overcome. And the next one, practicing the good things. Practice the good things as you know by practicing charity, by radiating loving kindness towards others. These are positive things that bring back positive results back to us. They bring back positive results back to us. And therefore, as these things begin to work out, fears leave you. And then you live a life without much fear. There will be some basic fears, small, small things, but they are negligible. Then come to meditation, which is the highest. That again removes them. And as you make this the basis of the life, you find your whole internal thing has become a new person. You are no more the person you were five years ago. No, definitely no. No more the person you were five years ago. No, definitely no. I personally have seen this in my own life. By practicing some of the things which I just mentioned, it brought about an entirely new thing within my own self. You begin to understand things better and then we only wish, why didn't I do this more and more? That's all. And you find your features will remain the same, the color will remain the same, your name will remain the same, but you are a completely new person inside and you will know it. Any amount of wealth spent in buying the biggest house cannot make you a new person. Because that you are waiting for the outside person to look at you and say, Oh, mister, you have a very large house. And if he doesn't want to tell you, what happens to you? Back negative again. Oh, you have a grand new, brand new car. And if he refuses to look at you, what happens? Back again, you go down. So like this, that is depending on the outside. But what we did just now is doing directly to the inside now. What the world is doing is outside. Big house, big carpet, big this, big that, latest earring, latest this, latest that. All the time, what are they doing? Somebody will look at me and say, I'm beautiful. I look much younger than I am. You look at us, how oh, we are crazy. I can go on to another big field. We are depending on someone else to praise us, to look up to us, so that the inside will feel beautiful. 
oh, I bought this skirt latest in the show market, in, in, in the, what do you call this? Uh, in a shop or something like that. Why? Why am I wearing the latest skirt? So that somebody will look at me and say, oh, you cute today. And that person is nasty, you will, oh, what a horrible thing you got today. He doesn't match at all. All our money gone. You throw it away, the tears come out. I wasted my last money on it. You see, you're all the time being played with by others. People can ruin our life like this. Praising you, robbing you. So all the time fear, fear, again fear comes in. Before you touch the next new, uh, what do you call, necktie, do you think my friends will like this necktie? I hope so. What if they don't have? You see, fear again comes up. So that is depending on the outside for praise, respect, admiration and so on. But this path that we are chosen here, like you are practicing the eight precepts path, that doesn't depend on the external. It depends on your own practice and the strength of your own conviction. Strength of your own conviction. This is a different path that doesn't look and wait for another person. This is true because nobody can rob you of this reward. Nobody can rob you. That is why they say the path chosen by the Buddha is super, is a supreme path where none, where none can rob us of the little rewards that we have. We may not have very much reward, but none can rob us. In this field there's no robbery. We get it. We are no more dependent on that person for our good feelings. You have seen this in your daily life, how people can destroy your courage, your confidence by speaking the wrong thing. Oh, what's wrong with you? That hairstyle doesn't go with you. Oh, awful you look today. Oh, you do something about You see, I'm just being wicked. I'm just being wicked. Or it could be one man's imagination, one person's opinion. He has drilled fear into you by those words. All that money that you spent on it is gone. Here in the eight precept path, in the path chosen and showed by the Buddha, you don't have to expend that much money. Nobody can twist you around your little finger anymore. You gain every step that you take. That is why I say this path is a fearless path. This is a fearless path and costs so little, so little. You knew very well the Buddha did not take his bank balance with him when he went out. <laughs> no, no, he took nothing. He even cut off his hair, gave it to Vidyajana and said, go back. He had nothing with him. So we need not fear. There is no loss here. And this is the only way by which we can lead a much, uh, a less fearless life. There's no point in me driving ourselves crazy in this society. Every other year a new car is coming out. Every month a new fashion is coming out. A new hairstyle is coming out. We can't keep up with it. So the Buddha shaved his head. Never mind. I don't have to go to any more saloons, he said. You see, he was a very wise person. We don't realize his wisdom. We don't realize it's wisdom. That's what I said. Wisdom is difficult to get. We can practice for a long time, but unless we take to the right path, we will not get wisdom. All we can claim is, I'm struggling and struggling. 
until you find a master who can teach you the path of wisdom, the path of jnana, the wisdom path, which cuts through this ignorance. What are we trying to do? To cut through ignorance. And what does the Buddha say? Which will cut through ignorance? Wisdom. Panya. That is the only thing that can cut through wisdom and give you that strength whereby nobody frightens you anymore. You don't fear this lady and not at all. You have that supreme confidence in you. I know how to handle each situation. I may lose, but I will not tremble. That kind of confidence is extremely important and I just give to you the rewards, the methods by which you can acquire, the, acquire this one. And with this, I thank all of you for giving me an opportunity to share with you some of my findings. If there are anything else, we can discuss in private. Thank you very much. This is what we call a good question. Obviously, he has been listening very carefully. This is the word morality everywhere we hear. Everywhere we hear morality, morals, morals. But very few tell us what is morality. The closest we can see is virtues. Something we do which will not bring pain to anybody else. We say, honesty is a virtue. Appreciation is a virtue. Today appreciation is a bit of a problem because when we appreciate something, our subordinate does, we are afraid that love will get swell-headed. If you tell a person, oh, you're handsome, man, we are afraid. See, again the fear comes in. So that can be called a, a, a good virtue, isn't it? Honesty, sincerity, faith, courage, compassion, kindness. Kindness, people are afraid to practice in today's society. I'm sure all of you are aware of that. People are terrified of practicing Kindness, they say, if you're kind, people will take advantage of you. If you smile, people will take advantage of you. Therefore, you should always have a very stern face. No, you are losing. Why should you take such an advice? Don't take advice from such people. They are mentally sick. Mentally sick. Their craving for power is so great. They are willing to make themselves negative. You can get power. I don't say no. You can get power. But at what price? What price? If one is happy with the price, by all means, go ahead. So, when we are kind, we are being moral. It's a virtue. Right? When fear brings into us what? Prejudice. Fear also brings into us prejudice. Oh, I don't like this color. I don't like that looks. I don't like that. This is being in a prison. We are actually being in a prison of our own emotion and thinking. Very few realize this one. Why should you become your own prisoner? We are prisoners of our own mind. Oh, this one, no, this place, no, this type, no, this. We have practically got a prejudice for everything. And then we say, what? I spend every month $200 in dressing up and still I feel horrible inside me. Only I know it. 
All the others don't know. They only see my new hairstyle and my new makeup and my new handbag and my new tie and my new coat. Yeah, we have managed to deceive that fellow. The society. But we have not deceived ourselves. We know in our heart. We know it. We have not deceived ourselves. So, kindness is a great virtue. Compassion is a great virtue. All this, when we put together, you become a very morally upright person. That is what morality means. There are many more things, right? All these honesties, everything as I said just now, all you put together in one lump, that is a moral life. Moral life does not mean out of my pay, I pay two dollars to the till. What is so wonderful about that? Yes, you're being charitable. One quality only, charitable. A small a percent. Okay, I earned it, five thousand today. I give you fifty cents. Oh, yeah, go away. Charity is very good. We learn to help another person. That helpful attitude. Eric asked me a question the other day. He said, what is the Sermon on the Mount? That's precisely what the Jesus what Jesus said. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Don't hurt the person, whether psychologically, administratively, physically, emotionally, financially. Do, don't do anything which will bring pain to your neighbor. And today we know we can inflict pain on our neighbor through so many ways. It's no more physical. It's not just physical. We can destroy our person psychologically. I can go long into this one because I have studied this. Psychological warfare is being run everywhere. We can destroy the nerves of a person by being cold and isolated. I don't want to teach because of bad things. Right? You see, that's also a destruction of our neighbor. Because some of these cases I hear every day. I hear them. Because this is my job. Naturally, I hear it. They come and tell me what happens in their private lives. You see, until it breaks the person down. So it need not be physical, it may be psychological, it may be financial, it may be some of our moves, our tactics, anything. The end result is destruction of the other person. Inflict pain on the other person through our anger. We can inflict a lot of pain on another person through our anger. I, real, I realize this at a later stage. Any question? Charity is part of the moral thing. What does charity mean? Giving away something, right? A lot of people, charity meaning giving unwanted clothes, disused things, a few pennies from the pocket, or some more money in case of a big man, right? Charity need not be only in money. It can be towards kindness. Every time you meet Eric, he gives you that little warm smile. That is already a great charity. See that? He gives you that warm smelling, warm smile that makes your heart feel nice, isn't it? He doesn't have to give you the 10 cents, go to the mama shop, buy tea and drink. Right? Direct to the heart it goes. That is the for we can give psychological things. Praising, comforting a person, consoling a person, right? Inspiring a person. All these are psychological which the society, as I said just now, dare not say anything because basically we don't want the other person to be happy. I'm so sorry. This is a sad part.
shorter life. So when we throw that again, because there is fear, remember? I told you it's fear. That's why I say once you handle this fellow called fear, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm playing the, using the a playful manner, you find life is completely different. Completely different. I have practiced it. And I'm hoping to practice more. It's a bit frightening in the early stages. But I think we all can overcome it. So charity need not be money alone. A kind word, a smile like Eric does, is more than enough. Any more questions? Yes, I think I saw one here. Yes, come in. He, he's better off in Mandarin. He's a Mandarin scholar. He's a Mandarin scholar. Now, he's right. What he says is, when we say a person is fearless, at the, at the time when he's virtuous, he's, we say he's fearless. Then when we see, as, he's, as he put it, a hantu, then we are frightened. It is not true. It is not true. If you are a person with great virtue, you will not fear that hantu. You will not fear. Certainly, no, I have heard of people my own friend, I think I gave this example before, I will recite it in this instance. He's a person who's practicing virtue only. He sells nothing, he does no other work. His daily, life, daily lifestyle is practicing virtues only. And one day, he happened to speak to a spirit to go away. So the spirit left that person, went back to the master. The master got angry and said, go back to that fellow, ordered him. So when the gay man came, when this person came back to the house, there it was sitting for him with frightening eyes, staring into him. That person was not frightened. He refused to run away. He stayed there. I am not going to leave this place. So you see, he didn't get frightened. Oh no, fear won't come. He knew there was something bad, difficult, difficult situation, but not going to run away from you. So when we practice true virtue, and wisdom must be there. I forgot to tell you just now that wisdom is important. When both are combined, you get that fearlessness. And I, am I right? Say, so I know. What he meant was there are people who practice simple virtue but don't have the wisdom. Wisdom is difficult to get. They are, if you read that book, I forget the name, two wings of a bird. Virtue on one side, wisdom on that. Many people practice virtue, but they don't have wisdom. So you are just like one wing bird. You need the other one. Wisdom is important, very important. Panya, yes. Anybody want to share something that you have? Share it. Nina, ask a question. Tell us something. Yes, there you are. Yeah, I thought I saw a hand. Yes, you, yes. As I told you, confidence is what practically <laughs> most of the people are looking forward to. Confidence. Confidence in what? In talking to the people, meeting the challenges of life, meeting our spouses, our subordinates, our superiors, our neighbors, and you can go on, our peer group. All these things require confidence. And because we don't have confidence, we either put a cold front, shy away, uh, avoid, 
Uh, these are the usual techniques we use. We avoid, we shy away, we shrink, we put a stern face. All these are techniques which we use in daily life to hide our fears, which means no confidence. And therefore here, what is the best book to read? I have given you just now, when you go through these disciplines, it's a discipline that you must go through. In fact, uh, I just called someone last night while you were all here, and I spoke to this person. Did you go for this course? Yes. What did you learn in this course? This, this is. But at that time, they made no meaning to me. But now it makes meaning to you, me. I have paid so much for this course. What is it cost? Self-confidence course, which I told you is the one everybody running to. Cost you a lot of money. There are good books which you can read, but you must be able to digest the book. Third, you must be able to put whatever exercises that is given there into practice. Many people read, they don't understand it well because it is too high. Like the person I just rang up yesterday is one of our own members, not outsiders, our own member. So the member said, no, at that time I didn't understand. It is nothing but the cultivation of self-confidence. Some people can't, don't want to read the books, they have, so they attend these courses. Shortcut. Five days course, three days course, $500, $400 and so on. It's all meant for that. So if you want to read and develop yourself, it's a very slow process. When there are many books in the market which says, uh, bring out the develop your self-confidence, develop, uh, overcome your shyness, overcome your inferiority complex, uh, become a dynamic person. Oh, the title is endless in the bookshop. And you can select any one of them. Now, to answer our friend's question, I'm going around to give you a correct picture. Difficult to uh, recommend any one single thing. There are many in the market and you can choose them. But you still will not get the whole thing. I have gone through many of these books. That's what I say. In the end, you know what you find? He is just trying to tell you to practice. He is actually putting into practice what we did just now. I explained virtues, discipline life, having faith, in, something, in, in the Buddha and things like that, but minus the religious names. He puts aside the religious terms. And then he says, practice this. It's actually a religious discipline applied to daily living is what he's telling you. Ultimately, that's what I found out. That is deep relaxation, auto-suggestion, self-analysis, contemplation, giving up negative thinking. Uh, is this how? Like Dale Carnegie, for instance. He has written many, many books. That's one of the names, Dale Carnegie. Right? After that came many other authors. And the market, the, the Europe, the American market is full of this book. Full of this book. Every other week probably another book is coming out. And in the end, you get more confused than before. Because they're giving too many things. It's better for you. The basic thing is this one. Self-discipline. Morality. Daily contemplation. Think things over. Discuss things with the right person. Have a good mentor. Meditation. Prayer. You do these things. Having done these things as your base, and then if you read some of these books, a little bit here and there, to me, I don't enjoy it very much, because I find it superficial. The problem with these books is, I have found it superficial. 
This is depth, but difficult to follow and understand. I must admit it in the early stages, but later you begin to love this so much. So that is your basic. So don't spend too much money on that. Maybe one book just to go through. But this is your basic, your basis. Any time you get a problem, personally approach me. Don't pay me. So I help you out that way. Save your money. All the answers. Correct. You're all the answers. It's true. Ignorance is the basis. When we are ignorant, we are afraid of practically everything in this earth. Yes. Oh yes, you're right. You are very right. When you have the four noble truths and understanding of the four things, how craving arises, desire arises, Fear cannot exist. As they say, lightness, light and darkness cannot coexist. All our teachings remove the ignorance, darkness of ignorance. And darkness is over. How can you fear a spirit or anybody at all? No, it cannot come in. It just can't come. It doesn't come at all. In fact, they begin to respect you more and help you. Am I right, the Karanis in the Sutta? Yes. Someone had the hands at the same time. It's common, isn't it? It's always common. How to talk to somebody who's superior to you, particularly if he has got authority over you, particularly if he's got authority over you, your own boss, or a girl who's very beautiful, or a man who's very handsome, or a man who's very rich. It is all common fears in the society throughout the world, not only here, but throughout the world. The only way to overcome is this. Throw away fear of failure, fear of being rebuked, fear of being criticized. If you ask me one day in person, I'll tell you some of the instances I've gone through in my life, and not properly speaking, a crowd like this. How I overcame by being simple, straightforward, frank, that is your weapon. That is your weapon. Did I give you all the three words just now? Simplicity, frankness, non-egoistic. You understand? You use that, you can win any battle. Yesterday I also used it. And that guy did not know what to do with me. He was trying to put a brick, big wall in front, as if he's some, some master or something like that. Administration, of course. I was all the time, I plucked up guts, I went up to him, hello, how are you? Of course, I spoke in the other language. Not English, of course. So to him, he was struggling within himself. He just couldn't put me out. I had what I wanted. I gave him something. See you again, mister. I came away. You see, you unsettle him. Because he did not know how to handle a simple person, a frank person, a sincere person. He just don't know what to do. Hello, how are you? I was shocked. I was putting on all my stern face, hoping he won't greet me. He has greeted me again. And he's gone further. He's even asked me, how are you? Damn it. You see, you already had button, button him. Being simple, you can do lots of things. Yes.